So here we are back on the dashboard for Casa OS. In the first video of this series, uh, we took a look at the just general setup of Casa OS and some of the things that you might uh, want to, to be aware of with regards to using this as a new Docker management platform. If you compare this dashboard to the way it looked at the end of our last video, uh, there are some changes and, and the ones we really wanna focus on here primarily uh, are, are right over here in the storage area. Now, originally we just had one drive set up in here and uh, here you can see that now we have three. So in this video, there are a few things that I wanna cover, uh, three things specifically. Uh, the first being getting uh, an external USB drive mounted uh, appropriately with the right file system. Uh, after we're done with that, we'll take a look at setting up Samba shares so that we can manage the, those uh, external drives uh, more easily if we need to you know, edit files, delete files, things like that, and we don't wanna use command line. Uh, after we're done with setting up the drive to, to be mounted appropriately and shared appropriately, then we're gonna take a look at uh, remote access sorts of things. And, and let me just kind of jump into that, uh, that explanation just a little bit. Uh, real quickly here. So when we when we first took a look that that first look at at Casa OS, uh, I had mentioned that Casa OS's dashboard runs on port 80, and that would make it complicated to use something like Nginx Proxy Manager or Traffic or something like that, because the developers had planned on using uh, an SD LAN, which uh, which is a software defined local area network like zero tier for remote access. So I think that's actually a great solution for a lot of people uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the first being that you don't have to worry about your IP address changing. You don't have to do any port forwarding. Uh, in order to gain access to uh, any of the containers on said network, uh, you have to be given privilege to be on the network in the first place uh, from the administrator of that network. There's really, um, I won't say it's impossible to get on, uh, you know, ha hackers will do what hackers will do, um, but it definitely limits the possibility of an unwanted visitor on your server. However, for those people who do want to use uh, a reverse proxy like Nginx Proxy Manager or Traffic or, or Caddy or any of the different reverse proxies that are out there, uh, in this video, I'm going to show how to switch uh, the dashboard port for Casa OS to something other than 80. Uh, in fact, if you pay attention during the video, uh, you may actually notice that uh, for the most part, I've currently got mine set up on port 89. However, I do demonstrate uh, later in the video how to uh, switch that to port 90, just as, uh, just as a demonstration proof of concept, uh, whatever you wanna call it there. Uh, so basically, like I said, we're gonna cover three things in this video. I will try to have those marked uh, in the description down below for timestamps. Again, we're going to uh, set up uh, an external USB drive. We're gonna uh, change the ownership of it. We're gonna change the permissions of it so that it's easily readable and writable. Then we're gonna set up some Samba shares on that drive so that we can easily access uh, the, the files and folders on there uh, via our file explorer. And then once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and take a look at modifying our installation to be accessible via Nginx Proxy Manager or some other reverse proxy uh, if we decide to do that. But first, a message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page. And right here, you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So with all of that said, let's jump over to my dashboard and get started uh, on this whole process. Okay, so here we are uh, on our dashboard here, and we can see that we've got a couple of, uh, looks like 128 gig uh, USB drives plugged in here. And then there's a Sabrent drive that I've plugged up here as well. And basically what we wanna do with this drive is uh, get it uh, formatted correctly, get it mounted correctly. We also wanna set up a Samba share for it so that we can manage files on it more easily. Um, so we're gonna go through a few steps here to get this done correctly. The first thing we wanna do is go ahead and log into our server, like so. And then what we wanna do next is just do it. We'll do an FDisk. Dash L, oops, we gotta run that as sudo, sudo, like so. And here down, down here, oh, let's scroll back up. 
Do, do, do. So we've got SDA1, uh, SDB1 and 2, and then SDC1. And this is our 250 gig drive that we want to work with here. Now, it's already got a file system on it. So I think we're pretty safe in this case to just go ahead and run. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is just convert that over to uh, an EXT4 file format. I just like to keep things consistent on my on my systems whenever possible. Uh, and everything else on here uh, is ext4 uh, based on the way it was mounted earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this command, which is just make file system ext4 on that device. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And it says, hey, this already contains a file system. Uh, it's a VFAT file system. Do you want to proceed anyway? Go ahead and press yes if that's what you want to do, like so. And we'll give this just a moment to do its thing. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and get some information about our drive. And the way we're gonna do that is by running uh, sudo um, block ID or BLK ID, uh, and then our device ID. So we'll go ahead and enter there. And right here, we can see that we've got some different bits of information uh, that we're gonna go ahead and, and grab all of this like so, and then we're gonna open up a notepad uh, just so that we can keep track of this for later. So we're, the next thing we wanna do is actually mount the drive appropriately and give it the right permissions. I, I like to mount everything in uh, slash MNT like so, and we'll do an LS. Here you can see I've got a save rent folder from earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do uh, sudo rm-rf save rent. There we go. So now we're, we're back to just having that one USB folder in here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is a sudo mkdir uh, sabrent, just because I want to name it what the drive is so that I know what I'm working with later. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we want to make sure that we give permissions uh, or ownership of that drive to our current user. So what I want to do next is sudo or sudo. I don't, I, I use those so interchangeably. Uh, ch own, not ch mod. Uh, we're going to do this recursively. Uh, we're going to do pi. That's the user that we're logged in with right now. We're going to do mnt, oops, mnt slash Abram, like so. And so now uh, pi owns this Sabrent folder. So that's a good next step. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and um, modify our FS tab. Uh, so that we can make sure that everything mounts appropriately uh, in the future. Okay, so here is our FS tab. And uh, basically what we want to do is create a new line here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do part. There's a few different ways you can do this. I'm going to do part UUID equals. And then I'm going to come back over to here. And I'm going to grab this little bit of code or this little identifier right there. Uh, and we're just going to paste that in there. And then I'll do, oops, I'll do a couple of tabs and then MNT slash Sabrent. And then uh, another couple of tabs. Uh, we'll just do one tab this time. We're going to do ext4. And then we're going to just set up uh, default and 00, zero uh, like so. And we'll do control O and enter and control X to save and exit. So now uh, that should have our FS tab uh, modified correctly. What we want to do next, though, is actually uh, because the system has already mounted the device uh, in, in its own way, we want to actually unmount that. So we're going to do sudo or sudo umount or unmount, but it's umount uh, slash dev slash sdc1. Okay, so it actually says that isn't mounted, so that that's good. Uh, so let's go ahead and do sudo mount like so. And that should be uh, basically all we need to do there. What I want to do next is actually just reboot the system just to make sure that uh, it stays mounted uh, when we reboot. And while we're waiting, just so I know, uh, we're going to do ping uh, 192.168.1.130 uh, space dash T. And this way it'll just run and, and it will notify me when the system is back up and running. All right, it looks like we're back up and running. So we can go ahead and hit control C. And then we're gonna go ahead and log back in like so. And then just to make sure that things mounted or remounted the way we wanted them to, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And right here we can see, we can see that things changed. Uh, and now uh, SDA1 is our mount on Sabrent, but uh, I can't say that it, it did mount correctly. It mounted where we wanted it. So um, there, there's, there's something that may, that may confuse you while you're in the middle of recording a video or just generally speaking. So now that we have our device mounted and we know that it remounts or mounts appropriately, uh, even though the SD label or device name changed for some strange reason, it, it mounted in the correct space. So I'm happy with that. What we're going to do next 
uh, is we want to uh, make sure that we've got Samba uh, set up and installed on our system. So what we're going to do, uh, first things first, we're going to just do a sudo uh, apt-get update. We'll give this a second to do its thing. And uh, just because I'm also going to do upgrade, uh, this may throw an error. It may not. That's fine. Uh, and the next thing we want to do is install, uh, we're going to do sudo apt-get install Samba and Samba uh, common bin uh, for our Samba shares. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I've already done this, but I want to run through it so that you can kind of see what's going to happen here. Um, and basically, uh, it's already installed, so we're good to go there. Now, the next thing we're going to do uh, is we're actually going to edit our smb.conf file. We can see that this is sudo nano uh, etsy samba smb.conf. So we're going to go ahead and edit that. And then we're just going to scroll all the way to the bottom like so. <clears throat> okay, so here we've got uh, a couple of shares already in here. So we can kind of get an idea of what these should look like. So I'm going to drop down to a new line. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, Sabrent because, you know, I like to keep my naming conventions uh, as easy and simple as possible. Uh, we're going to uh, about, do about four spaces in. We're going to do path equals uh, slash MNT slash Sabrent because that's where we mounted uh, the folder or what that's where we mounted the device on the system. Uh, so we're going to do this again. We're going to do read only uh, equals uh, no. Uh, because we do want people to be able to write to this now. Uh, this next part, uh, I because I'm the only person who ever accesses my servers uh, the way I do, uh, I'm going to set uh, the next two variables of public and writable to yes. Now, this may not be the right setup for you. You may want to uh, set up so that only certain users can access this. And in this case, uh, if that was the case, you would say public equals no. Um, <clears throat> however, I like to keep all my stuff open and easy to use. So I'm going to say yes right here. Um, and then the next one will be writable. Oops. Wow. Writable also equals yes. So we'll go ahead and uh, press control O and enter and control X like so. So next thing we want to do, uh, because we've gone ahead and uh, modified this uh, Samba configuration file. We want to go ahead and just restart Samba. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, if everything worked correctly, uh, we should be able to pop this open and come up to here and do backslash backslash 192.168.1.30 and then Sabrent. And here we go. Now, what we want to check next is <clears throat> can we uh, create a new file here or a new folder? I'm going to say text file and we cannot. So what we want to do next is actually modify the folder permissions that uh, for, for this particular share. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo uh, chmod. Um, I'm going to run this as 777. Make these permissions what's appropriate for your system, for your setup, how you're going to run your uh, run your server. Um, because I'm just doing this as a, a Samba share, just to share files. I want this to be a read, readable and writable uh, on my local network here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just do this as 777. And then we're going to do uh, MNT slash uh, Sabrent, like so. And there we go. Uh, so now we should be able to come back over to here. Uh, right click and uh, do a new text document. And there we go. Now we have our new text document uh, created in there. I'm going to go ahead and delete that just to make sure all of that is set up and ready to go now. So now that we have created uh, our Samba shares and everything is showing up here appropriately, uh, here we can actually see that they have reordered themselves yet again. So uh, what we could do here um, is do a custom install. And then if we were going to go in and fill this out, uh, we just say like Nginx and uh, just call it Nginx. Um, and then, you know, put this on port 80. This is just an example. Please don't follow along here. Uh, this is just for demonstrative purposes. Uh, for ports, I'm gonna do 80 and 80. And then for volumes, uh, basically what I wanna do here is just kind of, this is where this little demonstration was going is for our host, we can do MNT slash, um, uh, Sabrent, like so, and actually because, because I want to check here, uh, I just wanted to see what the actual folder should be uh, for that. Uh, let's see if they've got us, if they've got any information in here where that should actually go. Um, so it's gonna be user share nginx HTML. We'll just go ahead and run that in there, uh, like so. And then our environmental variables, we're not gonna worry about. Uh, this is just to demonstrate. Uh, a couple of things, actually, a couple of things that I've noticed that you'll want to pay attention to. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and just install that. We're going to let this pull and download and do its thing. And then we're going to come back and take a look at that container. All right, so here is Nginx. If I click that, um, that's fine. Again, I don't really care about that so much as I want to take a look at the settings. Uh, because right here, sometimes this happens, um, and I'm not sure why. Uh, I've had it actually change that to a whole different thing entirely. Let's see here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just select that. Click select slash save Brent. Uh, click save. Let's uh, let's give that another look uh, and see if that saved this time. There we go. So then if we come back over to here, um, refresh. Nope. Oops. And uh, let's click save. Uh, because I didn't actually tell it what to do there. Uh, we're going to call this Nginx. I apologize for that. So we're going to click next. And then hopefully, there we go. Now we have an Nginx folder in there uh, that was created uh, by that. So now we know that everything is uh, is working correctly. Just make sure that when you are setting up your containers in here, uh, that you, you verify that this host volume is where you actually want it. I've had it change to something. It was like... Um, data slash and then a bunch of junk afterwards and, and that's just one of those things you want to make sure of that i've noticed that i wanted to bring to your attention uh, so that uh, if you wonder it is a thing that i've noticed as well okay so now that we have this set up we want to talk about remote access and there are a couple of different ways that we can go about this now if you remember my last oops now if you remember my last video i talked about how uh, the, the, the folks at Casa OS decided that they wanted to use zero tier for remote access because, uh, well, for security reasons more than anything, I believe. But one of the things that they had done was actually put this dashboard on port 80, uh, which kind of makes Nginx proxy manager and other reverse proxies uh, a bit more difficult to configure. However, uh, if you'll take a look up here, uh, this whole time we've been doing all of this tutorial so far, uh, we've been running this on port 89. We can see that right up here uh, in the URL bar. Um, and it's actually super easy to uh, to make that change to run uh, to run Cos OS on a different port so that you can use port 80 for your own needs. So what we want to do, um, oops, we want to do a uh, sudo uh, nano, and then we're going to go into Cos OS server conf conf .i and I like so. <clears throat> And then in here, uh, we're gonna see some stuff. And basically if we scroll down to where it says server, uh, we can see that the HTTP port right here uh, is set to 89. If I were to change that, um, I could change that to basically whatever I wanted to. I'm gonna change it to 90 uh, just for the sake of changing it. Um, but basically then we can do control uh, O, enter, and then control X, and then a sudo reboot now, like so. And again, remember we're up here on port 89. Uh, I wanna run uh, that again, just so we can keep track of when the server comes back up. Okay, so the server's back up, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and close out of that, oops, like so, and then we're gonna get logged back in. All right, and so the, what we'll wanna do is come over here and refresh, and it failed. So let's change this to 90, and there we go, so we can get logged back in. And that's how you can go ahead and change uh, the, the dashboard port from 80 to basically whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, here I've made it 90 again so that we can install Nginx Proxy Manager on here. Okay, so there you go. There is how to uh, set up a, an external USB drive, set all the permissions on it, get it mounted, get it shared. Uh, and then if you choose to use a reverse proxy later, also how to modify the dashboard so that it's not on port 80. We've moved it to port 90 in this case uh, so that you can have access to port 80 for the reverse proxy of your choice. So normally at this point, I, I would say, hey, there's links in the description. And that's actually still true in this case. But uh, instead of linking to uh, one of my sites, I'm actually going to link to Pi My Life. Uh, there's a couple of articles there uh, that I use as reference points for the content in this video. So I'm going to uh, give them credit and also uh, shoot you guys over there if you want to uh, copy and paste the commands from there. Uh, all of that information will be available in two links in the description down below. So this video has been long enough already, but there's a couple of things I want to wrap up before uh, before we go here. Uh, the first being I want to give a big shout out to my my patrons, my channel members. Those those people are amazing. I want to thank them uh, for for continuing to support the channel through everything going on right now. I do also want to mention that uh, after the first of the year, I will be discontinuing channel memberships. Uh, I've got my reasons for it. There's actually a, a post over on my community tab that explains why I'm going to do that uh, with some additional information on other ways you can support the channel if you decide to do that.
But I think with all of that being said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.